What's up, everybody? It's Zach here, and I'm joined along with Eric. Derek, how's it going, man? It's going fantastic. I'm glad we're doing a live thing, you know, for a change. You yeah, know, just to man. change it up. We haven't done it like I, we were talking beforehand. It's like we haven't done one since September when the Ubisoft thing happened. Yeah, it's it's been a hot minute. It's been a hot minute. So I'm glad we're doing glad we're doing it live. You yep. know, but it, it the added the addedness of doing it live <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> a lot more setting up. Yes, a lot more setting up. Amy says, hey, hey. And then she asks, oh. should I use my word band now or save it later? I think it would be a lot better to use it later because now would be really difficult. <laughs> It'd be really difficult. Be like, you can't talk about, you can't say games. That would be like so difficult for both of us the whole time not always, to be able to say you could games. always use your, your favorite word, uh, microtransactions. See, I'd rather not say microtransactions. <laughs> I'd rather not have to say microtransactions. But we all know that the gaming industry loves that. So, yep. loves Everything that. Is- Mm-hmm. They love it more than they love their mama. And you better love your mama. You better mm-hmm. love your mama. Guys, we hope that you're doing well. Thank you for being here today with us. Like we said, this one is live, guys. So if you want to go check it out uh, in the watch it on the, the replay, you can watch it over on YouTube on youtube.com slash nerdcamp network. And guys, you can support us by going to patreon.com slash nerdcamp. Toss a few dollars, help Help the help the good old ship just move on through the waves. Keep the, the barnacles off the hull. You know, all of those nautical terms that we don't really enforce here. But guys, we do hope that you're having an awesome, awesome day. Uh, we're going to be talking about all the cool and interesting yeah. things that have been happening in the world of video games. Um, so let's get into it, Derek. Let's get into it. So this is the first one we're going to talk about is interesting because I know you dabbled with it in a, um, mm-hmm. in a little bit ago, um, or at least a few months ago, you were telling me about it. Uh, Google is ending their first party game development for Stadia. They're still going to have third party support. They're still going to keep that. In fact, what mm-hmm. did I see? Um, what was it? They're, they're, they said they're having what game was it? Oh, now it, I'm drawing a blank. There's some big third party game was going to come to Stadia in March. So they're still going to keep Stadia is still going to be a thing. They're not going to axe it completely, but they're done with first party internal development. And then the head honcho Jade Raymond is actually leaving that the development team and that studio. I know you dabbled with it for a while. You weren't exactly the biggest fan of Stadia. So do you want to, what are your thoughts in on this? Like for me, Stadia has missed the mark since the beginning in my opinion (laughs) uh not having enough games and charging for the service but then double charging by having to buy the games it's like yeah you get a few games for free but it's like those games you can also get for free other places so it's like it's not like really like anything amazing um for me it's not giving you incentive to go there yeah exactly for me like the idea is interesting the cloud gaming where you can you know play games and it doesn't matter what system you're on it doesn't matter if your pc is super powerful or whatever you are able to play and it'd be a good experience and that sounds amazing like i can play on my phone if i had an android which was interesting as well it was limited to that um because like playing on an iPhone rarely worked, um, but I could do all of these different things. But the execution was horrible because I tried to play on my gaming rig with the really good internet that I have, and yeah. it was laggy as mess. Like trying to play, I tried to play the, um, I tried to play Destiny. I tried to play the Talus um, project Talus or. Principle. Yeah, there you go. And it was so laggy on both of those that, like, I started getting, like, sick because it was just, like, uh, uh, uh. Oh, wow. like it was just it was like really, the VR, really... <laughs> and it was like the VR simulation all over again. Yeah, exactly. So it was it was not pleasant. Uh, them ending first-party development tells me that Google does not see this as a fully viable thing for them to continue to put money into and uh, that 
like many other things that Google has done, that it will eventually die. That it'll eventually yeah. they will they will cease Google it. Glass. Yeah, Google Glass, uh, Google Plus. There's so many things that have been put into the graveyard of Google that you know this is just going to be another one of them. So I think it's a really cool concept. I would love to see it be able to be successful, but I think you know them not being a game centric company where they've got their hands in so many different pots that this is just this was just a well what if we do this this would be really cool we could make some money and now it's just something that they're less than a year of fully being out they're already starting to pull things back so yeah it, it, and you hit the nail on the head with that right they're such a big corporation it's like walmart walmart doesn't care if, if one if one section loses money they make it up so many other ways Mm -hmm. um but with google you know they it's kind of like they owe it to themselves to at least try and if they want to be the first in this like if it succeeds it's like oh we were the first to this market now you know now everyone has to follow the beat of our drum where where if they doesn't succeed it's like man tax write-off we're good um yeah but i also you know and i also think let me because i was going to ask you this too do you think this is just a stumbling step in the into the streaming future, or do you think this is like a bad sign for streaming future to where it's like, all right, we need to go back to the drawing board and everyone needs to go away for a minute before we're fully committed to this? I don't think it is necessarily people are going to pull back from it. Um, just like VR, people never really pulled fully away from VR, even as it's had its struggles over the years. But I think, you know, it's going to take somebody like Xbox Microsoft to really make this something that can be successful. PlayStation's tried it, had its problems. Google's tried it. Um, I know uh, even Steam has tried it in a way. Like just several different people have tried it, and it's just the people that are willing to take a loss for a while and get the bugs worked out to really make it happen. And you know, you, you know, thinking about it too, Xbox and PlayStation have kind of done their own. It's a smaller, like, focus group type of thing, but they kind of have done their own little things with PlayStation Now as their streaming service. I know you can download games from it now, but you can most of it, most of their library for PS Now is streaming, um, and then you can even stream that to like a tablet or you know proper device too if you have the subscription model. And Xbox, you know, they just got into last year with streaming Game Pass to your phone. So they've they're they're t they're toying with the idea and seeing what kind of iterations they can get to work right out the gate, but it's not a full fledged idea. What's like Stadia was? Yeah, and I think that's just you know, it, it seems like everything is just kind of like ideas, like it's like not fully fleshed out, and I think that's Proper the concept. biggest. Yeah, and I think people, you know, for people to put money down, it's you know. It's going to be harder for people to believe because the gaming industry, we went on and on about this last week. The gaming industry has a has a very bad habit of putting proof of concepts out there and then funding it with people's money, yeah. like the consumer's money, and then figuring it out as they go. So I think people are becoming more and more wary of that as, you know, we get into, you know, the consumers are being smarter and smarter about their money, voting with their wallet. Exactly. And you know, it was, it was a, someone brought up a good point too. When I saw this article back in December, like I kept, I, I remember seeing it, but I didn't know it was that big of a deal, but apparently someone made the point. It's like, yeah, they were giving away founders kits back in uh, December, like just giving mm -hmm. them away at this point, like not having like either not charging much money or just giving away for free. And it's like, that should have been the first like little red flag, <laughs> but I yeah. guess they didn't want to make it official until this month. Yeah, it it it's it's hard to hard to see, but you know, like Google, that the launch was so bad, you know, and it, it's it's it is what it is at this point, you know. They've like the Xbox One when it launched, like all the poor messaging that went yep. with that console, kind of. And not kind of, it put PlayStation at such an advantage that you saw the PlayStation 4 get close, closer than anyone's gotten to the PlayStation 2s. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's amazing. So, like, you've got to be very conscious of how the public perceives you when you first come out the gate. You can't be stumbling. You can be DOA before you're even at launch. 
Exactly, exactly. Amy says, hey, Zach and Derek. Hey. Hey, Amy. How are you? <laughs> um, our next one, and I was very, very surprised by Me this. Me too. This very, was very definitely surprised. out of nowhere. Yeah, it was just like, boo, gotcha. Uh, Gearbox <laughs> is acquired by THQ parent company Embracer Group for $1.3 billion. We'll continue no, to no, work. Wait. B, billion with a B. Yeah, with a B. Uh, they will continue to work with 2K on Borderlands, though. That That's pretty yeah. big. Like, I, I, they're not in the middle of, like, creating a Borderlands at the moment. Yeah, I mean... I- I, I don't know because I know they did some more like post launch content for Sony. Mm-hmm. I don't know like how much more is in the works. To be fair with you, yeah. like I know I know when they first launched, they were doing seasonal updates, but then they kind of yeah. stopped that when COVID hit. So I don't know if they're gonna pick that back up or if they're just like I don't know if they're doing another Borderlands property, some more side content like the pre sequel or whatnot. I I don't know, but it is it was interesting to see this because um. And I didn't even know Embracer Group was pretty much like the one buying up all the properties, but it is under THQ Nordic, which is like the revived, you know, B tier studio. Like, and this is arguably their their biggest acquisition that they've done. Like, they own a ton of IP, like over a hundred IP, and some of them they brought back with like remasters or a sequel to it, um, some stuff. But it's like a lot of B tier IPs, like Dark Siders, Dead Island. Um, Dark Siders not a B tier. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, if, if the first or second one wasn't, but the third one, mm, much to be desired. Yeah. yeah. Um, but even Metro, which is like at that time was their biggest property because mm-hmm. Metro Exodus like really brought the franchise up. Oh yeah. And and they own Saints Row as well. Um, mm-hmm. so they've owned a lot, a lot of like mid tier IP, but this is their first big. Now I don't know, like the article I don't think stated what IP is encumbered with this acquisition because you know who knows if they'll have if they'll be able to make borderlands like who knows like yeah. with, between that one. but you know bullet storm i think no not bullet storm um there was some other ip that gearbox made that was like okay to like pretty good that mm-hmm. you know they could get from this and like bring back um yeah. it'll, it'll be interesting to see what comes of this and i i didn't even know gearbox was looking to move off of like i i want hopefully randy pitchford like is going to be out because I know yeah. that's like, that's the one that's <laughs> yeah he, him he's from succeeding. He, he's been a big, big, been really bad for the company. I uh, just want to give a shout out. Our first mate, Brandon Hicks is in the chat. What's, hey, up, what's man? up, man? Um, one thing that I, it was kind of interesting. It was like, Oh, this is, um, you know, they're going to continue to work with 2k. And I had the thought, what if it's like with Disney having the sony properties like with spider-man and everything because if 2k owns the borderlands property not gearbox then that might be why it's like okay we'll we'll work with you and be able to you know uh get a piece of the pie and everything but we'll let you use one of our developers and everything because clearly it is the big thing that you know gearbox does Yep, I'll say that's that's pretty much their claim to fame. That's their cash cow, mm-hmm. and they know like say what you will. Like pre sequel definitely brought it back a step um, from mm-hmm. two, but three yeah. as you know as mixed it as it was. I feel like at launch it still made them a ton of money. Oh yeah. So th- that oh, that's yeah. not going anywhere anytime soon. So we'll see. But yeah, I think that was my first thought as well. Like when I saw that they were still going to partner with 2k to make borderland stuff, I was like, okay, this is definitely a Spider-Man like Sony deal. It's like, all right, we'll lend you this character mm-hmm. per agreement. Um, but you know, we're still going to own this, you know? Yeah. I, I, I think that's where we're at on that, but very, very interesting. $1.3 billion. Like that's absolutely that's crazy. crazy. You know, not as crazy as Microsoft buying Bethesda, but still, that's a gr- for yeah. THQ. That's huge. The Bethesda one was crazy. A lot of moving around. This is like uh, the uh, basketball after season where free free agent season where everybody's moving around. It's like stay in your place, don't move. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, like when the, LeBron went to the Lakers, <laughs> everything uh, changed. Don't don't. We're not going to talk about that. Um, MLB, the show, talking about moving around, guys, is going to be coming to Xbox for the first time. Yep, that's crazy. 
it, it is, but if you kept up with it, la- and, and all the midst of the pandemic last year, this kind of went flew under the radar, and people thought, oh, okay, maybe this won't enact for a couple of years. Nope, this is like the next iteration. It's ready to go. They yeah. made when the licensing deal between Sony and MLB came up. They were like, they came to Sony and were like, hey, your studio does Sony San Diego does fantastic work. It mm-hmm. continues to kill. It's like the number one baseball game out there right now. Mm-hmm. But we want to we want to send it out. Well, we we want to fatten our pockets just a little bit more. We want to make more money off of this. So it's like we'll let we'll let you keep making this game under your studio umbrella, but we want it to come everywhere. Now it's not coming to Switch, but you know that it definitely meant it was coming to Xbox for the first time. And it's weird because if you didn't see the box art, it still has the PlayStation Studios logo on the front of the cover on the Xbox. So it's weird <laughs> seeing that Sony's going to publish a game for Xbox. <laughs> I think that's awesome. I think that's awesome. Uh, Brandon says, I'm excited for MLB the show. He's, he's an Xbox guy. I think it's cool. Like, I I don't think that if it was not a, like a sports game like MLB or whatever, like, I don't think PlayStation would be putting out a game on a different console Oh yeah. if it was like a first party game. You know, yes, yeah. this is technically a first party game because it is owned by Sony, but I don't think if they had like the MLB, like they would have done that. So yeah, yeah. I mean, if it wasn't a, as a huge entity as the MLB was, like if this was mm. like uh, arena indoor football, like some smaller teams, like yeah. they probably wouldn't have this kind of pull. But you know, when you look at the major sports like NFL, NBA, MLB, they're gonna tell you're gonna have to dictate to their tempo. You know, they're not gonna they're not yeah. gonna pander to you. Um, especially and you know, while it was great for Sony. It always was strange because that was the only sports game ever to be exclusive to one console. So it's definitely great for Xbox owners, you know, because I can't tell you how many people come in year after year that, you know, are either one disappointed that they can't get MLB the show because they're huge baseball fans on Xbox mm-hmm. or how many people buy a PlayStation just to play MLB the show. Like oh, yeah. for baseball fans and for Xbox fans, it is great to see this like. But yeah, it, it was great for Sony, but it was also weird that that was the only sport. Like, it would be one thing if, like, NBA was exclusive to uh, Xbox or FIFA was exclusive to Nintendo or whatnot. That would be, oh, be yeah. one thing. But that was the only sport game ever to have some kind of exclusivity. So it was just yeah. weird from the get-go. Yeah, it was it was strange, but, you know, I, I like it. I like it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and it does gangbusters every year. Like, they can – and it's – for as much crap as we give sports games for just churning out and just like copying pasting the roster, MLB actually gives attention to detail in the in like a nine month turnaround year over year. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm trying to uh, get rid of uh, random bot chats at the moment. <laughs> I'm not yeah. ignoring you. Um, no, you're fine. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's definitely great. And now I'd like to see the revenue split though. You know between. Uh, like, will Sony still get majority of the earnings that are sold on Xbox, or will Xbox get like all the percent, like a hundred percent sales from their system? I'm curious to see how that is going to work as well, because um, it it's like I'm sure they're going to get like a big majority of it. Um, yeah. So I, I'm not sure how it's all going to work you know yeah because because like i said it, the bot they showed the actual body this wasn't like like a fan created one this was like the actual cover for the game because it's releasing in uh, i think april 20th um it had playstation studios logo on both covers so with them i'm sure sony's gonna have to get at least 51 percent of the earning you know they're gonna get majority share of this so that's gonna be interesting but again it's great it's great for gamers to get more the more hands means more money for the for the people that actually matter and make great content yeah I, i'm excited for it like i i'm really looking forward to more like collaboration like i think that is kind of the thing that most people are going forward with and everything uh let's catch up with uh chat really cool really 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 cool because i just read cool in the chat uh brandon said i used to play mlb games back on the gamecube you yeah, being an old man. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I also said I could see the money bring being almost even even between the consoles. And I, I think it would be if it was a third party developer. I think yeah. that's kind of like uh-huh. how it normally works. But it being a first party like Sony studio, I think it might be like a 60 40 split kind of deal. 
It'd because be interesting because you know because you know Microsoft like just thinking about this too. Microsoft owns Mojang, which does Minecraft, but Minecraft's mm-hmm. everywhere. So I'd like yeah. to know. I l- I wonder whatever model they use from their profit, like from what what Nintendo and Sony brings sales for mm-hmm. Minecraft, like how much percentage they get, because that would be yeah. a template for how what, uh, how MLB is going to work for Sony. Yeah, I, th- I think that would be interesting to see what kind of split they got going on. We got Murdoch in the chat. He said, yo, this is cool. So thank you, man. <laughs> Appreciate you. We got, we got all the awesome people in the chat, um, and we're glad that y'all are here today. Um, speaking of, of cool. sports and cool sports stuff, EA Sports is bringing mm-hmm. back college football finally. Like, yes. what was it, a year or two ago? When they finally lifted the thing saying, mm-hmm. all right, if, you know, college players can make money off their image and likenesses that are used yep. in video games. Mm-hmm. Um, when that when they finally got passed, everyone started speculating. It's like, all right, we can have our college football back and we can do this and that, um, which is funny because last year, at, uh, I don't know how long they but uh, they put out Doug Flutie's Maximum Football. <laughs> They're doing another one, apparently. So it did enough to warrant a sequel. The game Who? was $20. At Who's Doug football? Flutie. Who was Doug, Doug Flutie? He was remember, the guy. He was like a short quarterback for Boston College. He's the one who invented the Hail Mary pass. Okay, I know the Hail Mary, but I don't know Doug Flutie. He was he a sound. Heisman winner too. So like, it, well, his name ain't Tim Tebow. He ain't no Heisman winner. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he did. He put his name on this maximum football game. It mm. was $20 at launch, which tells you everything you need to know about how utter trash that was. Dude, um, that sounds like the best game ever. We should do a series of us playing Doug Flutie's uh, Flute Excel Simulator. Football. <laughs> 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 um, um, what was I going to say? But, um, so that came out. So that was the only college football we've had on PS4 mm-hmm. or Xbox One. Yeah. But it was, it was not to be desired. But then they, yeah. the, earlier this week, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday because I, I immediately saw this and then I immediately like at, at, during a lull at work, I literally went to scroll the article and pasted it to the nerd cave. I was like, this, this has got to be known. Like, they can't wait till <laughs> tomorrow morning. But um, they put out the teasiest of teasers, you know, saying your wait, your patience has been uh, will finally pay off. Thank you for, you know, believing, uh, keeping the hope alive or whatnot. College football is coming back. That is great, and it's EA Sports, which means it's going to be, you know, keep that labor of love, because, you know, the yeah. last one that came out was NCAA 2013. back in 2000, yep, 2013, um, mm-hmm. which that was when the whole, like, strike happened, where it was like, all right, you can't make f- college football games until, like, some kind of compensation is made, Yeah, and it's kind of sad, because that's the, now I can finally put my PS3 away, because that was the only reason <laughs> I kept my PS3 hooked up, um, <laughs> It was, uh, you know that was know for God seen... of War Ascension. You know it was for God of War Ascension. Don't even play with me, Derek Daniel. You know it was for God of War Ascension. You caught me. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> no, no, it wasn't the story. It was the multiplayer for God of War Ascension. Remember that. That's That was the oh, king yes, of that. Yes, The connection. Woo. It was it was smooth as butter, guys, that connection. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you saw uh, this meme already, but the, um, without spoiling it, they posted that one scene from Endgame, where it was like, me to my Xbox 360, you can rest now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, no, no. But, but it's it's great that we're getting it. Now, it's going to be interesting how fast a turnaround it's going to be, because mm-hmm. people are already speculating, oh, they announced this in February, it's going to come out this fall. No. I don't think, like, if they're just teasing it now, like, if they do say it's coming this fall, that's going to worry me, because then that means they're just going to push it out. Well, it is also EA. Um, and speaking of that, uh, Brandon said, I just hope that NCAA isn't going to be as bad as Madden. And that's like, I loved NCAA. I yeah. rarely, I rarely bought a Madden game. I usually like got it from Gamefly, got the achievements, and then sent it back. But yeah. NCAA, like, we played that religiously in college. Yeah. And I, I you think and David Samuel were the yeah. reasons why I got into it. 
Yep, and I think, you know, it coming back is going to be a really cool thing because we finally get to have, like, the updated rosters. We get to, you know, experience all of this because college football has changed so much between 2013 and now, and it's just, like, the powerhouses, like, yes, we've still got, you know, roll tight Alabama, but, you know, we've got other... You know, we've got like Clemson that has just been like trucking along for, you know, quite some time. Did we even have. Yeah. Who's who's the national champion right now? Is it Alabama? Yeah. Alabama beat Ohio State. Okay. Okay. How did Ohio State even get in there? I I don't believe that. That's that's false news. (laughs) (laughs) No, I say no, they were in there. Um, I don't believe that. They must have played like the the water boys and the cheerleaders. They they beat. No, they beat Clemson, believe it or not, in the playoff. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. (laughs) I don't believe it. Is Um, must not must champ. Uh, Urban Meyer still there? No, he he left a couple of years ago, so it's Ryan Day, the head coach now. Okay, okay. Uh, Let's catch up real quick with our chat here. Uh, Murdoch says, I've never got much into sports games except for NFL Blitz. NFL Blitz 98 was amazing. Oh, my God, it was so good. And NBA Jam, love both of them. Um, But, man. NFL Blitz 98. I remember getting that on the PlayStation 1, playing all the way through the Super Bowl, and then something happened. Like, I won the Super Bowl, and then was, like, doing, like, the the graphic or what, like, the little presentation or whatever. And then, like, I think my brother turned off my PlayStation or whatever, and, like, I flipped out on him. Oh, I flipped out on him. Uh, (laughs) Murdoch, to our Ascension question, our Ascension comment, oh, my Ascension. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you gotta say. Trust me. Um, Uh, It ascended to to another plane. Yeah, so. yeah, it it needs to go to another plane. Apparently, I, I knew I knew Brandon uh, had some 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 bad decisions, but uh, he says roll tide roll. Um, and then Ohio State only played seven games the whole season. Well, you know yeah, they're was, a bunch it of was cowards weird because of COVID. Well, <laughs> it, yeah, it was weird. it was weird too because the whole college football season with COVID. It I'm not going to give that diatribe, but it was just weird because everyone started dip later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but <laughs> you're, you're like to, Zach calling people cowards today. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the word of the day. That's the one Amy should ban cowards. <laughs> so, um, but no, going back, like it's going to be interesting now, like because we back when it was last made, we had the BCS. Mm-hmm. Now, while we still have an iteration of the BCS, it's the it's the playoffs. So, are they going to mm-hmm. incorporate that? Because you know they're already talking about exp- expanding to have more teams in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, don't know how soon that's going to be. I've heard it could be this year, upcoming season. It could be next year. Who knows? Mm-hmm. But um, how, how are they going to treat that? You know. But the biggest thing going um, to me is like how soon this is going to be put out because if it's two years away. I wonder what consoles are going to put it out on because uh, are they going to put it out on PS4 and Xbox One as well, or are they just going to put it on the new consoles? Um, or you know, now, if it's two years away, then it's I think it's a safe bet yeah. to say that it's going to be PS5 and Series X only. Yeah, I think if we get it this year, it is definitely like because you've got such a huge install base of Xbox Ones and PS4s. Like, I think it would be stupid not to like right. cash in on all of those because right now we're dealing with such an issue and we talked about this last week such an issue with people getting their hands on the new consoles because of x y and z you know because of all the manufacturing covid precautions and all of that it's so hard to get any consoles that okay i can sell to you know however many have been sold to the new consoles or i could sell to that plus yeah, you know exactly. the hundred million that PlayStation Four sold. Xbox never gave their numbers out, so I have no idea how many they sold. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they stopped after I think like twenty five, thirty million. So <laughs> yeah, they they stopped giving giving numbers out. I'm I'm sure they're probably around like eighty million. You know, easy. Yeah. You know, on so that. So that, so, but um, and just one thing too. It's, you know how the only reason they lifted that license was because they made that deal to let um players make uh money off their likeness and images Mm -hmm. here's ea going back to being ea again um they said in the statement um because i went back and read it later they said oh you can we're we're not going to have 
we're just gonna have generic characters in there. We're not gonna have anyone that looks like any of the star college players at all in the game. Now, whether that means you can create your own player um, is another thing, but it's like, we're just gonna have generic character models. We're not gonna, basically that was the loophole they found. It's like, all right, we're not gonna send money to these players and uh, for their likenesses, we're just not even gonna use their image and likeness. We're just gonna get ahead of that curve right now. So that's EA being greedy as always. Yeah, I, I I definitely saw that coming. Like EA is not yeah. going to pay out of pocket if they don't have to. And exactly. Like I know that they will probably like okay, this is number fifteen. Let's say like it has the same height, it has the same build or whatever. Yeah. But you know they're not going to put names on the jerseys or anything like yeah. that. Exactly. Which, I mean, it kind of always was that, but you had the yeah. ability to download the roster names to it. Mm-hmm. So I think I think that's another way of them saying, like, we're not going to have that. We're not going to bring that option back. Yeah, but I think was- it, if you avoid it at all costs, like, if you don't allow people to, like, you know, download the roster names and all of that, like, you, you can't have a lawyer come in and say, well, here is people using roster names. Like, this person is associated with this. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay... You know, yeah. like there, there's you have to be very careful of that. And I think EA, they going to save that money any way they can. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And see, they're also going to make more money because thinking about it now. Granted, they also used to do a college basketball game back in the day. Like the mm-hmm. last one was 2010. March Madness. So I don't, I don't know what I don't know what kind of how that fell through. But mm-hmm. This is going to be the first like collegiate sports game they've made in a while. And you know, okay. since they since they stopped making it or weren't allowed to make it. They've done a lot of things with their sports games, like Ultimate Team, you know, Mm -hmm. like the microtransaction thing. So how are they going to implement that into this game? Because, you know, from just for for me, who's played Madden, right? That's the only EA sports game I've ever played on a regular basis since NCAA. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's pretty much like your own version of fantasy football. It's like, hey, mm-hmm. do these challenges or buy these packs and get your favorite players or, like, improve your squad. Well, if they're not going to use character likeness, how are they going to do that for that type of game? So, of course, you're still going to have, like, your generic, like, um, uh, connected franchise and, mm-hmm. you know, season. But how are they going to do this going forward? Because, you know, one thing Madden did the last couple of years is do your own story where you create your own player. You pick your yeah. college, you know, start from high school. You pick your college you want to go to, play through that. Um, mm-hmm. and then go to the league. But I, I could see them doing some w- iteration of that for college football. Yeah. But how are they going to do, like, what other modes are they going to do? Because they can't do ultimate team for this. I think, you know, they do, like, uh, they had dynasty mode back in the day, uh, and then they had, yeah. like, the online dynasty mode, which was a ton of fun. Um, and then you had, like, your your create, created player and everything, and yeah. you would play all the way through, and then it would connect to Madden. I'm sure that they will bring that back because you would play, like, four years, or you would have the option to, like, uh, stay or you know or yeah, leave after shirt. three years yeah um so i think they'll bring that back i don't think that they will do like a my team which means that they won't have as much microtransactions thank the good lord yeah. so yeah maybe i don't know like they could i'm they, sure they they'll could shoehorn come up with it a, in there oh yeah they could come up with a, a workaround with that easy but they're supposed and, to say hey you want these custom shoes or like these designer out like oh no like how it's gonna it's gonna be even more invasive it's like you get ready to like throw the ball and you go and like it pauses it was like to make sure that you you know you get to your receiver you need to pay a hundred ncaa coins right now and it's like but what if i don't I want to they legally can't do that, but if they did, <laughs> they would lose a lot of money. You, I'm just saying, like how like 2K is really bad about it. It's like you have to buy like the oh, yeah. the stat points and all of that essentially. But I'm excited, guys. I know we kind of we ran with that one for a while and everything, just like old Tebow but would be do back in the day. Um, yep. whew, whew, he Speaking was good. Of EA. Speaking of EA and. Uh, all the cool things that's going to be happening. EA has announced the date for the Mass Effect Legendary Edition releasing May 14th. Now, there's some few things. We're going to kind of talk about this one probably for a while. We got a lot of right. EA news this week. Um, yep. So for all the Mass Effect fans out there, rejoice. It's 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 May 14th. Um, I'm glad. Like, it would be cool if it was in seven day. But I'm I was going to say, like... 
they missed now if it if it wasn't for the fact that Resident Evil Village already claimed May 7th, they could have easily just claimed that May 7th spot as released. Yeah. But Resident Evil beat them there. And they could they could still have like, you know what, we're gonna go head to head, but I think it's a better well, interest not to do that. In in seven day is November seventh. So it would right. be a much longer day and everything but i'm glad we got a date finally the game when they first announced it i was like oh my god it's finally come true because there's been years and years of rumors of a remake but now we're finally getting to see it um but a few details it won't have the mass effect 3 multiplayer which was a lot of fun um yeah. i remember like there was an app on your phone and you could do missions to like build up your team on your phone which was really really cool uh but there they really was also that. that's cool Mm -hmm. I, I played it on my phone all the time like as I because I just got I was doing my internship uh, from college uh. when it came out so I was like doing all these like things to like build up my team and everything but also the Pinnacle Station DLC will not be a part of it and I was reading an article on this that Apparently, like when they went back to uh, get the Pinnacle Station DLC because they had a different uh, team work on that, uh, that the code, a lot of it was corrupted, especially like the main files. So I like this was this like it was like un unredeemable essentially like being able to bring that back, which kind of stinks because the Pinnacle Station DLC was really cool. And I liked the the multiplayer of mass effect 3 but it's like having to host servers having to have all of these different things in place for that to work and then apparently they will have the extended cut uh as canon now so a lot of people had a lot of issues back in the day with the ending of mass effect 3 and for good cause uh but at the same time it did bring into consideration when does the public have rights over art and everything but right. now they're they're going to be bringing the extended cut uh to the canon version of it and uh, i'm really excited about it yeah i was about to say you know coming out and you know i knew going back to you know i knew n7 day was in november 7th but you know just to have it being the seventh yeah. of a month would have been yeah. you know a nice thing you just a like, nice little like for the fans type of thing oh yeah but, definitely um, yeah, I saw that when you said that, I saw that this morning, actually, that, you know, the reason they're not putting in Pinnacle Station is because it was the, the data was corrupted. So, mm -hmm. you know, obviously they can't work. You don't need to have it in there. But they said, I no. think in the reveal trailer, said it's still going to have like 40 DLCs, which is crazy. I didn't even know they put out that much. Like, I know they put out oh, yeah. a lot for two, but oh, yeah. I didn't know they put out that much for the whole mm -hmm. trilogy. Yeah, and so. I think they're probably counting, like, the characters that they add in the DLCs, not just, yeah. like, you know, the the skins. Like, there were a lot of, like, things you can download for, especially Mass Effect 2, uh, that were, like, skins or weapons or this or that, the other. I think that's what they're... Because there were not 40, like, story additions to it. Uh, it was a lot of little things and then uh, some kind of big tentpole uh, items that they added, which right. I'm really looking forward to getting to do the Shadow Broker DLC again. That was, like, the best DLC that I've ever played. So good. That was good. in 2, right? Yeah, that was in 2. And uh, it was so good because, like, you met Liara in 2, and, like, she's, like, fixated on, like, the Shadow Broker character. And, like you see her on one world and then it's like but but like she was like my favorite character in the game right. it's like but 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 i i will i want liara back on my team because like she was super <laughs> powerful and then it was like okay it got they were like okay we're gonna do shadow broker dlc and it's gonna have liara and i'm like yeah and then like the <laughs> dlc was amazing and then three we got her back in the the crew and everything but like two's two is really good like the first one i love the story like i'm really really excited to get back into this game i wish it was a little bit cleaner uh that way i could yeah. stream it and everything yeah. Yeah. but uh I'm, I'm really looking forward to playing it again i it, it's my favorite game of all time the three of yeah. them and you know i'm old enough to remember posting a thing maybe not even two years ago saying that ea is like we're not looking into remasters or doing yeah. anything we're, we're not totally. doing because because everyone was asking for mass effect trilogy remaster and, and they were like mm, no and then what was it not even a year after they made that statement they remastered burnout paradise and it's like so you do want to do remasters you just don't want to do the ones we want 
Um, and yeah, I think and that it's was like just... burnout paradise. It's like, like I yeah. know people like burnout and everything, but it's like, <laughs> why was this it's... in demand? It's like there are so many other games, like the Knights of the Old yeah. Republic games, um, you know, literally anything other than Burnout. Exactly. So, and I, th- but I think they use that as like t- uh, testing the waters just to mm-hmm. see if people were still nostalgic or were going to yeah. buy up a remaster of like an older oh, yeah. game from like, a fr- from like a like a franchise they had, especially Burnout. They haven't done anything with Burnout in years, so oh, yeah. that was definitely was like, hey, if we can revive this franchise that uh, bring back this franchise that no one's we haven't done anything with for years, and people buy it then maybe we should explore more of our popular franchises. But yeah. And going back to th- going back to three too, you know, um Mass Effect three. Yeah, that was obvious that the ending, the way it ended, because I've never played all of them. Like I played a little bit of two when it came to PS3, never went back and touched it. So I'm actually considering buying it for PS4 um to, you know, go through and play that whole trilogy. But I remember when three came out, like that ending was the most controversial thing in gaming that mm-hmm. year it came out. And then they tried to like fix it with like, you know, the extended cut. And it, it kind of quelled some of the, you know, the naysayers, yeah. but it, it didn't fix it. See, I never played the extended cut and like it'll be interesting seeing it now because like it just ended and it was like, what? Like I felt very yeah. like let down because this game was like I think it was still my most like hyped up I've been about a game and like there were a lot of great games around that time like think about like Gears of War 3 and just you know like like, all of those good games but like this one I was most stoked about because I loved the universe and the lore and then 3 was kind of like yep yep that was the (laughs) ending and 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 what I read too from that time and what I remember people's people's main complaint was they felt like all the choices they had made through the first two games and and all the events leading into three up to the ending just came down to like three core choices that didn't matter in the overall picture and that's what ticked off a lot of people's like so you mean Mm -hmm. i've invested time into this did this x y and z and all this minutiae stuff that i thought was going to pay off in the end for nothing yeah oh yeah and what's what's cool is like mass effect one this will be the first time it is on a Sony console forever. No, well, no. How about this? Yes and no, because I know one was exclusive for a while, but they they never did a physical version. But you, I remember the the Mass Effect trilogy. They did like the collection both on PS3 and 360 back in the day. That brought one over there. Did it? B- 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 yeah, they, they yeah, it had all three of them on there. Oh, okay. Um, as a, it know, was the first time it was physically released, but it came digitally to PS3 storefronts like. A couple of years okay, after, okay, because like I I remember it didn't come out on PS3, yeah. and then Mass Effect Two, like it had like a little like catch you up on the story, and you make a few decisions, yeah. and that kind of like yeah. set you up for two and everything. I didn't know that they put one out at all on yeah. PS3. They did. Um, I forget when, but it came digitally first. It, they never did a like standalone like disc version for it. Like okay. the only time it came physically to PS3 was when they released the collection all together. Okay. Okay. I stand corrected, guys. You don't have to tell me in the chat. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I wanted to, uh, you, you showed me a video and I want to kind of jump into that uh, so we can uh, show everybody just like a, some comparisons of the original version and then the updated version that we're going to be getting with mass effect legendary edition uh right. so let me let me get that up real quick uh for everybody but yeah i was going to ask you too you know like just I, I know you kind of expressed you know your excitement but just for you know as a mass effect fan because i know two is arguably your favorite one if i had to you know one is actually my favorite one oh, okay. is my actual I know, favorite i know um, you love two a lot so i didn't know if it was two or one but as a fan, like how great? Uh, well, I, it's a twofold question. One, how exciting is it as a fan to go back and revisit that universe, especially since they teased the next one at the Game Awards back in December? And then two, are you concerned that it's only going to be on PS4 or Xbox One? I, I, like, I'm excited because, like, I think it's going to be an awesome, awesome thing to finally get back through the games and everything. Uh, I don't think it's a big deal that is on quote unquote last gen consoles. Yeah. Like I think at this point, like you can squeeze out pretty much 
everything you can out of the console so you're going to have a really good quality game out of yeah. it and then seeing the um the ability of what we're getting with you know just remasters at this point like i am yeah. i'm stoked for it and i'm glad that we're going to be getting more mass effect games because andromeda like it came out and it was buggy i do want to go back and play andromeda uh, yeah. and see it and everything so like i think you know having this kind of cleanses the palate you know what i mean yep, yep. It's, washes the then, bad taste out of your mouth yeah exactly and then gets us ready for you know what mass effect can be in the future and everything and bring drew Carpishan back so he can tell a good story because he like he wrote the the games and everything and he's an amazing writer so i'm really looking forward to it uh so let's go over since i got everything set up and let's take a look at this amy's giving me creepy um, e emotes in the chat with some guy's face <laughs> all right i lost my uh mouse again so that's fun it's ashley what you're seeing here yeah, I'll say what you're seeing here is the legendary edition first, and then they so show the original. Okay. I'm just saying, like the old version still looks really good. Yeah, no, you know the old version still looks really good, but it basically you the biggest like thing that right there you oh, can yeah. definitely tell. But you know, basic, and you know, you'll see it with some of the character models here later on. But you know, the biggest thing off the bat that you can see is like the better lighting effects between the legendary and the original. Oh yeah, they get more stuff to pop and more detail, especially for Mass Effect One because that was what two thousand six. Yeah, it was. Yeah, two thousand six, two thousand seven, something like that. Yeah. Holy moly, Batman! Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's definitely much more crisp. Um, than the the first time around. I want to say that's the Liara to Sony. No, never I mind. Think, yeah, that's not. It. And some of these you really can't see too too much detail, but like him, like you can see that's the legendary dude. Oh, then yeah, wow. like you, yeah, wow. exactly, yeah. Yeah, you could definitely see, like, the character models have definitely been improved from there. But then some of these is like, okay, I can't really see that much of a difference, but. Man. Like, there is some. It's like someone's, like, taking the, like, quality on a video and, like, going from 1080 to, like, 4... 4... whatever. Exactly. <laughs> like, when a video buffers and you get knocked out from 1080, 60 frames to... Yeah. 480p. Man, that looks awesome. Like, that... I am yeah. really, really excited about that. Uh, guys, yeah. let us know uh, what you think about the Mass Effect. And, Dan, yes, this is live right now, and happy belated birthday, man. I didn't see you in the stream oh, last night because I... I know you were doing birthday things, but happy birthday, man. Glad to have you here. Hope you're doing well. Um, but yeah, man, I'm excited. That looks that looks good. That looks good. Yeah. And to go back to like how, you know, to the last gen only thing, mm -hmm. like it, it's obvious, you know, at least for these, um, you know, for third party games, it makes sense because of how big the install base is for Xbox oh, One yeah. and PS4. Like just leaving them out to pasture is a definitely not a good idea but the fact that it's not even like yes you can play it on the ps5 and series x via backwards compatibility but the fact that there's not going to be a true ps5 or series x version is kind of upsetting that's like hey you're not even going to give something to that audience like even as small as we may be right now yeah. um you're still not giving that option and i forget i saw something as to like some excuses they give why they're not putting on the next gen but i did i forget what it said but it basically is like look what it's possible like you just chose not to do this yeah, and I, I think it's like one of those things. It's it's like if there's enough demand, like if enough people, because they, they can see like where people are playing on, you know, if it's this kind of console or that kind of console, if there's enough people that are playing on the new gen consoles, then it's like, okay, we will optimize it for the new gen yeah. and everything. So like I, I'm, I'm excited for it. You know, I don't have one of the new consoles, so it doesn't really bother me right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, Derek wouldn't give me his, so, you know, 
Y'all should yeah, no, shame, yeah. shame him in the chat, everyone. Shame him in the chat. Shame. Shame. <laughs> uh, before we jump to the next one, Dan says, thanks. My job gave me a great present uh, for working of working late. Mm. Yeah, that's that's a good present, man. I bet I bet it felt like like Christmas. Uh, then had a small dinner at Beefs. Beefs is good, man. I enjoy Beefs. What did you have? What did you have? That's the question. That's the question. Next story of EA <laughs> news, guys. This is EA say, week, apparently. EA three triple header. So yeah, <laughs> EA made three billion dollars for Star Wars games from Star Wars games. I'll read it right. Uh, will invest in Star Wars series along with new projects going forward. And we talked about this um, more the last few weeks about yeah, EA like, and Star Wars because we've had some yep. Star Wars news with Star Wars getting an open world game with Ubisoft and working uh, creating Lucas I think it's like Lucasfilm Games or something like that yep. uh, doing like a um, an Indiana Jones with machine games and everything but they did like double down that they will still be working with EA on some yep. Star Wars games as well yeah just like how Gearbox is still going to work with 2K yeah, exactly, and you know, possibly we talked about last week uh, the new a new Knights of the Old Republic. I was talking about you know maybe a High Republic game like that would be really cool. Um, I think this is awesome because I know me and Brandon um, were really big on this game, but that makes me feel confident we will be getting another Fallen Order game. Um, yep which i i love that's so such a good game uh in a style that i never really like enjoyed until i played that game uh that yeah. you know dark souls-esque kind of you know i'm, I'm, go I'm gonna punish you uh kind of deal <laughs> but i i love We're the not story yeah, I'm not going to hold your hand, you know, but the, the story was great. I, I really enjoyed it. And them being able to make $3 billion, I'm assuming with a B. is again yeah, with a B, <laughs> with a B um, that it would be, you know, not necessarily gross, but probably net on that yeah. where they're taking home three billion because they're going to be splitting that with old old Mickey boy because uh, Mickey exactly. going to get his money. Mickey oh, yeah. going to get his money. <laughs> like Uncle Sam, you, you going to get his yeah, um, yeah. And I only posted this because it's crazy to that they made that much money because they didn't put out that many games, like four or five at most, right? Um, like granted they who knows what they did because you know I know they put Star Wars stuff in Fortnite, so who knows what they made from that and who got but you know, that's a different thing altogether, I think. But EA making three billion off of this was crazy because I remember it being such a rough start. Like, granted, yes, people bought into Battlefront One because it was the Battlefront series, and they were like people hadn't had one in years. So mm -hmm. they, I th I'm sure a lot of that, a good chunk of that, came from, um, you know, that initial adoption. But you know, Battlefront One was underwhelming. Battlefront Two, as you well know, um, as you talked ad nauseum about, you know, when what? you played I've it. never talked about Battlefront Two in my life. What are you talking about, <laughs> Derek? Don't be lying. Stream videos, you know, that were video evidence, but um, <laughs> but uh, it came out with such a rough launch. Mm -hmm. that, but then they then they kept their heads down. They they just kept grinding, made the game that mm -hmm. people want to, and like, because didn't you go back to it a few years ago with the anniversary? Yeah, I went back content? to it, um, and it was actually yeah, last enjoyable. year. Yeah, I went back to it last year and really enjoyed what they did to the game because, like, they put in such love and attention to it, called out all the microtransaction junk that no one wanted, uh, added like the the new sequel stuff and all of that. But like it, like. What was cool was like we start we went through all of um, Clone Wars and everything and going to like Kamino and everything like you would see like when they attack Kamino in the Clone Wars like if you're fighting in that air and everything and it was just like man they were doing so much work here that that is not appreciated because of what they did beforehand and you know. I think about, you know, a lot of times we don't give grace to companies because, you know, of how they act and how money grubbing they are. And with this, and I even think of like Hello Games with No Man's Sky, it's like right. there are game companies out there that will lick their cat over and make it something that the fans will want. And with they've only put out three star wars games right battlefront battlefront 2 and fallen order there has only been three star wars games that i can think of uh, squadrons 
Squadron. So four Star Wars games, and they made three billion dollars. Yeah, that's crazy. So that's crazy. Is. But I think I think a lot of that came from when people saw that they put in that labor of love because you know what you hit the nail on the head. No Man's Sky is the poster child for a redemption story, right? Like where you came mm -hmm. out at launch, like that's how cancel culture is nowadays. And you know, if if we don't like you, we're gonna take you out. We're not gonna give you a chance to redeem yourself. But yep. as we've seen with No Man's Sky and Battlefront Two, if you actually make the game that people want and actually like show us that you're really sorry and that you really are going to do better in the future. We're going to reinvest in you. We're going to give you our money back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we saw No Man's Sky at the Game Awards back in December, one best ongoing game right now. And that game is, you know, I didn't even think that game was still relevant. Um, at least, you know, I knew it put out some stuff uh, here and there, but I didn't think like that many people were invested in it again. Yeah. Battlefront 2, you know, it got people to bring back to them by giving the anniversary content, like stuff mm -hmm. people wanted, fixing oh, yeah. on the stuff that made people talk bad about them. And then we saw that the, with these last two games, right? Like, I didn't play Squadrons. Like, I heard it was great. Yeah. Um, but if, uh, uh, flight simulator vehicle uh, games are not my cup of tea. Um, but mm -hmm. Jedi Fallen Order, like, we both loved. Like, it was my game of the year in 2019. It was a, it was arguably the best game I played in 2019. Um. And I, I'm definitely excited to see the future of that franchise. Like, that's what a Star Wars game is to me. Like, is Fallen Order, like, what, what oh, it yeah. brings, at least from a Jedi perspective. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they put out four games, like, they, that's almost a billion dollars per game, if you want to break it oh, down yeah. like that. that that's oh, ridiculous. Yeah. So, and, and the fact that it goes, it doubles down to, right, um, that they're going, that, you know, when disney came out and said oh yeah we're gonna not re-up with ea exclusively mm -hmm. but we're still gonna let them make a franchises so this saying that you know we're gonna invest we're we're fully committed to star wars in the future yeah. despite ea us not having exclu exclusivity rights to it yeah and i think it's a smart idea for disney to not be exclusive because it does limit the types of games that can be delivered and everything because ea is very good at the shooter games like battlefield and everything becoming battlefront essentially and they're good at doing certain things but having more companies in there to partner with makes it easier to get that you know return on investment because star wars was not cheap guys for disney to buy so you know getting people that getting companies that understand and have a passion for star wars i think is going to be the huge thing and also it's like okay yeah you messed up we're not going to take it away from you but we're not going to fully trust you with right. our baby like, you know and like Dan i haven't forg I, I forgive you i'm still mad at you but i forgive you yeah, Dan says, I would have preferred to have a reskin of the PS2 version of Battlefront 2. Yeah, I like Battlefront yeah. 2 back in the day. Oh, man, I played so much of that. I loved the, the Galactic uh, campaign and everything. It was a great game. I wish we would have had something more like that where you could go from like all across the galaxy and take over it like it was more arcadey and i love that i think you know having like the graphics of the current battlefronts and everything plus like the more arcadey feel of the old battlefront games would have been awesome um so if only if only i made the yeah. decisions we would be in a much better place and we would get well, rid we'll of get that in a galaxy far far away yeah, and we'll get rid of those stupid blue headlights. My lord, the blue headlights, they're of the devil. You know what isn't of the <laughs> devil? <laughs> you know what's not of the devil? Switch. The Switch. They, you take them and you... Anyway, uh, Switch outsells... <laughs> Laugh out Zach and those blue headlights. Yeah, me and the blue headlights. I hate them, guys. I hate them. If you got blue headlights, you're on my list. Uh, Switch out sells 3DS, and almost an 80 million have been sold. And the light is about to sell outsell the Wii U. And the light's only been out for how long? Like a year? Uh, it, no, just a little bit. It came out in 2019, September 2019. So it's about okay. a little over, about a year and a half. So, okay. but yeah, it's it's crazy because you know I thought it, I'm surprised it hasn't already outsold the Wii U because there's only like 50 in existence, but. <laughs> Yeah, um, like when when they when they said, "Oh, it's about to outsell, outsell the Wii U," and it's like, I know you're trying to like make this a positive thing, a good thing, but yeah. the Wii U was like a garbage That's not the truck on fire. You want. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> ah, it's, it's about to outsell the Wii U, and it's like, yeah, 
Uh huh. That's cool. Um, <laughs> like I, I know they're trying to say like this alternate version, the you know kind of watered down version of the Switch is already outselling our previous console, and I'm I'm happy for Nintendo. Like I am really really happy for Nintendo because they they took a bad situation. Everybody coming into this generation with Nintendo was like, this is the last one. If Nintendo does not do well, Nintendo is done, and then they'll have to start making games for the other companies and putting them on their consoles and all of that. And we even 100%. talked about that. And yep. now it's like Switch is outselling everybody. Switch is outselling PlayStation, Xbox, hand over fist, month after month because it's cheaper, one, and it's easier to have that than it is one of the other consoles. You know, even oh, yeah. like it's it's a it's, double down because you know if you yeah. buy, whether you buy the light or the regular switch you're taking with you on the go whereas like if you have a ps4 xbox one you know if you're go if you're going out of town on a trip or whatever you have to wait till you stop at a hotel or whatever you're staying at hook up the system hope there's wi-fi or the wi-fi is good enough to connect and then you wait and play that night whereas the switch is like all right i'm in the middle of playing a game oh we're, we're about to leave i can just continue this run in the car yeah, and like I love the portability of the Switch. I love being able to, okay, I'm going to just dock it and then I'm getting to play on my computer, you know, or okay, I'm, you know, going to the bathroom. I don't have to like I just <laughs> put my controller and then just go to the bathroom and play my game and everything. And I think that's a huge advantage that they have because like you were saying, like you have to have like a game case or you have to like have some way of transporting a bigger console. And the switch is just like it's it's not pocket size, but it's pocket size, right. if you will. Right. And I, it just excites me because it's like okay, they're selling so well. They've already introduced the light, which is like another skew for the switch. But this means that soon we're probably I know many people have talked about this, but the possibility of like a switch pro because we've got the light yeah. already. It's like yeah. okay, let's let's bring out another switch, but it's more powerful because we've seen every manufacturer at this point do a more powerful version right. of their console and nintendo is no you know no, no one new to this for, right i'll no. say they, they've been constantly underpowered compared to the other two yeah and it's not gonna i mean with now the ps5 and the series x out it's not going to change anything if they yeah. put out a switch pro but at the same time you know because nintendo's always been known for at least their first party games like having top notch polish when it comes to their oh, game yeah. like even even if it's like 1080p it looks like really good 1080p so but they owe it to themselves to at least get in that 4k river you know mm -hmm. yeah and i think you know with a more powerful version like i, I was playing uh, immortals phoenix rising on my switch and everything and i'm enjoying that game a lot but the graphics compared to what the PlayStation 4 and Xbox can do is so much different. Like, it's a huge oh, yeah. leap. But like you were saying, the first party, though, looks so well. And I, I think that's, you know, yes, that's a third-party game, and I'm comparing it, you know, this, that, and the other. Right. But, like, you look at Breath of the Wild, amazing-looking game. Like, it's gorgeous. Or you look at Mario Odyssey, Oh, God, still my favorite say. still my favorite mario game it looks so good and like it's just a testament of what they can do with the switch at where it's at right now um you yeah. know i don't think that they do a switch to i think they you know okay here's here's an updated version this is a more powerful version and then they start you know cutting out the the current switch you know as it goes and then they come out with another switch light that's you know then they just cut that the old one out, you know, then they just kind of that that's how I would do it instead of like, okay, yeah. this is the switch to or rebrand it. Like they are selling like hotcakes and they're doing well yes. for the first time in a long time. Cause like the Wii sold really well, but yeah. it was one of those it's consoles. Selling consoles. Yeah, it was one of those consoles that like Granny would buy so the kids had something to do. But now it's like people are enjoying the Switch because there's games there. Unlike the Wii U, the Wii U had really nothing other than Smash and Mario Kart. Like, and then they had Pikmin 3, but like it really didn't have anything because people were not buying it and Nintendo was scared. But now it's like, okay, 
We've got this. It's selling well. Let's keep pump, pumping into it. Let's keep having good games. And like Animal Crossing, we were talking about last week, they're constantly doing cool new things in there. Like the February update that's fixing to be coming out. Like I am so excited for it. Like all the cool things that are going on in that game. And it just goes to show when people enjoy a console, they're willing to spend money. <laughs> yep. And, and, you know, going back to, you know, on the Wii U, right, there were some other great games, too. But, you know, I think Nintendo wanted to hold off porting them until they saw that the Switch was going to be successful. Because mm -hmm. you saw that, like, they brought Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. They brought New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. They brought Mario Kart 8. They mm -hmm. they brought they recently just brought brought uh, Pikmin 3 over. Like, they yep. wanted to show, like, hey, there were, as bad as the Wii U console was, we still made great games other than just a few on there that people didn't have a chance to play or not enough people gave enough of a chance to play. So we're going to give you another chance on the Switch to play this and experience, like, how great of a game we made. Yeah, because, like, the Mario Kart that we've got on the Switch right now is literally the one that came from the Wii U and everything. And they, they you know, put all the DC DLC and everything into it. And, like... I've been enjoying what I've gotten to play on my switch. Like just the ability, like we were talking about to, you know, get up, move and all of that. And now having an even cheaper version with the light, like I, I think it, I think it's, they've, they're in a very special place compared to the other console manufacturers where, you know, they're trying to sell the new thing. That's really hard to get your hands on where Nintendo's like, here you go. It's available. Yeah. It's available. Yeah. It's available, you know, and they're they're making money hand over fist right now. I can tell oh, you they that. They really are. And, you know, it was one thing, right, when third-party support was non-existent on Wii U because it was a bad console. Now, granted, third-party mm -hmm. support is not... It's still, like, you know, the only sports games you get on, like, Switch are... Because I, I know when I posted the NCAA football game coming back, um, Caleb Palmer was like, this better come to Switch or I'll be upset. And I'm like, don't know how to tell you this, man, but it doesn't look that feasible. Um, cause you know, it was yeah, one if they had put go ahead. It, it's like you, you said in that comment, it was like FIFA is the only game that they put on there because like that is such a bigger market than American football and everything. And yeah. the last time they they did like those football games on a Nintendo console. It wasn't supported as much and they were so underpowered. So it's like, exactly like third so. party are not going to polish the, the game that's underpowered compared to the ones that are, you know, the overpowered consoles. Right. But you know, with them adopting like this cloud streaming service for like more powerful games to combat the under power issue could open up possibilities, you know, even more because, you know, Hitman three came to the cloud version for switch. Mm -hmm. So the, it's it's possible. So who knows? Yeah. But yeah, the only sports games are FIFA and NBA. Like I know they did WWE for like a couple years, but it was utter garbage. So that's um, they put 2K Battlegrounds, but like a true like WWE 2K game they haven't put in a in a couple years. But we'll see um, how it looks going forward. And yeah. I know Nintendo has been like adamant. Like everyone was speculating when it, when rumors first started popping up last year of a Switch Pro or another Switch model coming out. And Nintendo's like, not this year. Like being 2020 is like, not yeah. this year. And now it's like already, they're already starting to nip it in the bud by saying mm -hmm. 2021, don't expect it. We're not doing it. So I want to yeah. ask you like a couple of things, you know, from your okay. perspective. Um, one, do you think like that Nintendo will eventually, whether it's this year or not, like, do you think mm -hmm. down the road it would behoove Nintendo to put out another Switch console? And then what does that look like for you? Like, I In think in terms of like the console they make. Yeah. I think, you know, with the success of the the Switch and everything, I think they ride that wave, but I think having like I was talking about like having a pro version that can do 4k or can you know at least rival like early ps4, PS4. grass graphics and everything i think having that in place will continue the longevity and i think you know you could even do because like with the lights and everything like i know it's like more of like you, you can't like dock it or whatever and it can't go up to 1080p so like they're downscaling games already and it already does that you know when you're not docked um i think having you know that already in place for a pro version 
would be awesome. Like, I don't think, like, if, as soon as you start putting twos and it's like a an official next console, like, it starts making it more difficult for people to make that switch. Pun intended. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think if you, you know, you do like, okay, this is the pro version, just like they did with uh, the PlayStation 4 Pro, they've stopped making it. Like, the news reports is like they've stopped making it so they can focus on making the PS5. And it's like, okay, you start, you know, slowly weaning it off. And then it's like, okay, this is our, this is now our flagship is the switch pro. And then that's what you sell. And, you know, I think people will, will enjoy it because like they've already been enjoying it. And I think if, Nintendo handles it right and conveys it right and just like they're doing right now with the consoles it's like okay for the first year we're going to have games that are on both and then it's slowly just going to get rid of that one and then it's just on here I think doing that's the smart way to do it but unlike what we're going through right now I saw someone's like yeah I got a PS5 and it's got dust on it because there's nothing new to play like there's no exclusives on this console it's like come out with with something to sell the sell it you know yeah, something exactly. to sell it you know and, you Breath know of the wild you, too let's go baby let's go I, know. I, I didn't even beat the first one let's go <laughs> <laughs> hopefully it's this year suppose so that's what I've been hearing is like if they if it go if all has been going going according to plan, Breath of the Wild two is probably going to be the end of this year, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, um, but one thing that I, I would love to say just real quick, and Dan hit it na the nail on the head, uh, they've got Skyrim on it. That's all. All we need, guys, is if uh, whatever console comes out, as long as they got Skyrim on it, that's all that matters. That's all, all that matters. Three. Nope, just Skyrim. Okay. Just Skyrim. <laughs> that's all we need, guys. Only game to be all released hour, ever. We'll come out on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Todd Howard, come out on stage. <laughs> but um, I you know, and I was gonna ask. So, what does a Switch Pro to you like? Because now, granted, this has been no leaked rumors. This has just been pure speculation at this point. People are saying is like, okay, we have the Switch console that can do both. Then we have the Switch Lite come out that only is for handheld on the go. You can't hook a, hook that up to the TV. They're speculating that the Switch Pro is you can only have that hooked up to your TV. Like they're not gonna take it with you on the go. While I feel like, because, you know, like I said, when it, when it's docked, it has a higher resolution. When it's undocked, it has a lower resolution. And I feel like it, to get the most power that they're going to want, if it's going to be a more powerful console, they can't have a undocked version. But I also think it hampers them because they're, with the Switch, they've gotten so much, like, credibility and, like, goodwill with the portability of the system and that duality of the regular Switch to have, like, to do one or the other mm -hmm. that I think it kind of, it kind of like they kind of already like have one arm tied behind their back if they yeah. do like just a TV only version. Yeah, and you can't call it switch then. You yeah. can't call it a switch then. Uh because it doesn't do anything. It doesn't switch to anything. It's not a transformer at that right. point. Um it's a two edged sword. Yeah, it's it definitely is. Like I think, you know, if they take their time, the consoles are selling like hotcakes. Like there's no reason yeah. to rush this thing out. Take your time, get it to where it can do both. Like, it is more important to have both than have a home console and then, okay, we're going to go back into the handheld game fully. You know, it's like yeah. having both put together. It's the best of both worlds because Nintendo's handhelds dominate the market all the yeah. time. Like, they have never been beaten. Rest. The Vita still lives in my heart, guys. The Vita still <laughs> lives in my heart. But they... they I think with, you know, this pro version of it, like it has to have both. It has to have both. And for me, no more left Joy-Con drift, my lord. We've been battling that that beast recently. <laughs> and get rid of the baby buttons. Like get rid of the baby yeah. buttons on this. Like yeah. these buttons are so flipping small and uncomfortable. You know, like, yeah. after a while you're playing, and, like, these baby thumbsticks. Get rid of those things, too. Like, give me some real thumbsticks. Like, that, I know they're mine. trying to, like, make it, like, eat it more accessible for, like, children with smaller hands, but it's, like, you you can meet in Look the middle. Look at this hand, where, like, man. I ain't no child. I know. I know. I ain't no child. <laughs> I'm just saying, they, they understand they have an adult fan base, too, yeah. that plays these systems. So... I know they gotta they gotta meet in the middle to where it's like it's not too yeah. big for children to hold. Oh yeah, definitely. Also, you know, too 
not too small to where it's like uncomfortable for adults so yeah like well, it's it's not super bad but it's like give, give me give me like a little bit more than that that's like that's right, like super right. small guys like right. and and the thumbsticks the thumbsticks just feel cheap like you know so th there are some improvements and when those things cost yeah. like 50 60 dollars it's like i'd rather buy another playstation controller exactly. or I'd like the playstation 5 controller that can like whisper to me in my hands like I, I i played the ps5 the other day i don't know you got one just kind of want to say this to everybody my lord that haptic feedback man is delicious yes. it yes. is Especially delicious oh yeah i was playing uh, assassin's creed valhalla and it was like as you're pulling the bow back like the tighter the like the more you had to force down it wasn't like extreme but it was like oh that feels and like when you release it it's the the boom like it feels like yep. like as it's releasing like what a actual bowstring felt like it was like oh this is so cool and like yep. the weight of like when you're hitting stuff with your axes and everything <laughs> yep. nice it was very yep. very nice yep. so so it's and that that's just the taste you dipped your toe in the water of that. i know that's just the i taste know i know there. when when so. Derek gives me his ps5 guys uh <laughs> i i didn't read the comment earlier but I, I said the you know throw shame on to uh Derek. dan said dishonor on you dishonor your own family dishonor on your cow <laughs> <laughs> that's a great line yes but, um, it is one, one more question I wanted to have with mm -hmm. this, like, so if the, we all assume, like, I think it's safe to say we both assume that they're going to, whether Nintendo yeah. wants to deny it or not. Like, oh, yeah. they said it's not coming out this year, but they mm -hmm. didn't say they wouldn't announce it this year. So it, they sure. could announce it sure. and it could put it out next year. What do you, because we've seen, like, right with the PS4 Slim and the PS4 Pro, there was a $100 price difference. Yep. With the Xbox One S and the Xbox One X, there was a $100 price difference. Yep. Do you think Nintendo follows suit, or what do you think the price point for this will look like? Depending on how more powerful it is, like if it is a huge leap, uh, will kind of determine how much it's actually worth. Uh, I think, you know, the $100 model is like, it's like, oh, that would be awesome, you know, but if it is much more powerful, there's a lot of new features, then I could see it being $150, $200 more. Like, you know, I don't think Nintendo will do that because because they are not dumb. And Nintendo Nintendo usually like plays it like super close to cost, in my opinion, like yeah. uh, for like even thinking about like the Wii U side of things, they were like when they would sell like they were selling at a loss for yeah. a long time so yeah. i don't think that they would go over a hundred dollars 150 at max uh between the regular switch and the switch pro yeah like and you kind of hit it on the head too right like i don't i doubt they do 200 hundred dollar difference right because mm -hmm. what like you said they have always been cost effective consumer friendly when it comes to price point like yeah we might gasp at like the handheld prices from time to time but you know from a console perspective they've always been consumer friendly i don't think they would go way above what the switch is now unless they drop the price of the switch right yeah like if they drop it down to like 250 and they make the switch pro or whatever it's called like 400 dollars, then yeah that's obviously a, an easy out but yeah i think the hundred dollar model is going to be standard especially since like playstation and xbox just put out their new consoles like if they if they put it out 200 if they put it out 500 dollars for what's considered like yeah it's their current console but it came out around the time ps4 and xbox one so some people would view it as an older console so it's like yeah. you put it around the same price point as like ps5 and series x would be kind of not not advantageous for them yeah how much is the switch running for right now 300 and 300 the switch okay it's 200 yeah okay so, yeah so unless they unless they do it like a drop of the regular switch 400 seems about right for the switch pro but you know they could also do a nintendo thing and basically be like hey we up the graphics on this thing. We up the mm -hmm. we up the horsepower, but we're only going to charge fifty dollars more than a regular Switch. Like, I think because it's like what we've been saying, right? They've been mm -hmm. selling hand over fist. They've been selling like hotcakes, and Nintendo yeah. knows we can make up that money. And then, of course, if you see the NVD reports, the attach rate for Nintendo Switch games, like oh, yeah. Animal Crossing, has been crazy in terms of yeah. attach rate. They know that they'll their software will kill. So if they're like, eh, we could sell, we 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 might could charge four hundred dollars for this, but if we sell it at three fifty, we'll more than make up the revenue with game sales. 
Yeah, and I think that's that they're they're smarter about that because they know, unlike Xbox, PlayStation's not as bad about this. They have games that they can sell. They've got yeah, first party exactly. games that move consoles. Yep. You know, so like I know a lot of people that bought a Switch just to play Animal Crossing. A hundred percent. You know, or to play Zelda. Not as like I know when the Switch came out, the Zelda like sold you know more than the console and everything because people were buying it but most of the time zelda is not like a a console mover it do, it doesn't sell as well as a lot of people think and everything but i still think you know the games that they put out there move their consoles a lot more than the other two uh, because like the franchisers are so well beloved and people yep. like that nostalgia factor of it all yep so I, I think, you know, obviously I wouldn't be surprised if they put it at 400, but because mm -hmm. the game, like the system, the Switch itself and the games that they put out for it so far have been killing it so incredibly well. Mm -hmm. I could see Nintendo being like boldly like, you know what? We're that mid, we're that, that mid generation console we've been doing. We've been, we don't launch when the other people do. We kind of march the yep. beat of our own drum, but we're going to, we're going to make it accessible. Like we're going to charge more, but you know, 350 to me sounds about right for this like i i wouldn't be shocked if they did this because like i said they're they're they make so much money it's ridiculous they're not oh, yeah. amazon or you know the, by, by no means but they kill it they're killing it this generation so oh yeah and i i think that's you know if we we realize that it's like the switch came out like mid-generation of this past like the last generation is still weird right. for me to think of it that way and like it didn't come out right at the same time because they were still pushing same thing with the wii u like like they've been off for a while and i think yeah. that plays to their advantage because you know if they were released like in the middle of a generation then they're not fighting the other two to for right. the attention right. so it, it's very very smart it's very very smart all right, guys. Well, we hope that you enjoyed the episode. Uh, make sure to follow over here on Twitch. And if you're watching over on YouTube, make sure to subscribe and like uh, when we upload this. And let us know, guys, uh, what conversations you want us to have, any questions you want us to answer and everything. And if you've got a, a name for the show, because uh, right now it's just called nerd cave and apparently every time i tell amy that she looks at me as like that's a really bad name so um yeah let us know guys if you've got any uh, suggestions for uh, a name for the show and everything but you can go support us over on patreon.com slash nerd cave and you can also give us your prime sub over on twitch.tv slash nerd cave network and follow us over there uh, all the support is much much appreciated Plus, you know, first of all, thanks for everyone who came and hung out with us while we mm -hmm. streamed this live. But if you also like us to, you know, if you like this kind of content, and you want us to do more live streams of this kind of stuff. Let us know. Yes, uh, I love I love live streaming. So like us yeah. actually getting to do it live was a lot of fun. Um, You've only made a business off of it, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know that that's what I do. <laughs> um, Amy said, "Laugh out loud." Hashtag need original name. <laughs> you hating on me guys Dan we'll see you later as well you have a great rest of the weekend enjoy your weekend man and uh happy birthday again happy birthday uh but yeah guys let us know if you want to see more original stuff uh and more you know live stream content here we stream every Monday Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Time and Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Uh, and if you want to see this show live every week and you want Derek to be full time, go over to our Patreon. <laughs> yep. Go over to our Patreon, guys. All right, exactly. guys. We love you. We will see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And guys, give Derek some some love in the chat, guys. He needs it. He needs it. <laughs> All right. We see you later, guys. Love you. This has been Zach. Derek. Y'all have a blessed week.